I have two things in life that I can almost always count on to entertain me. Three if you count stupid card games. One being video games, obviously, and the second is spooky stuff. Naturally, things that combine these are sometimes the best of both worlds. Horror games and movies just hold a special place in my heart that most other things can't quite capture the same feeling of. Sometimes they're campy and over the top. Sounds like my wife. Sometimes they're unnerving and tense. Oh, you could be kidding me. They can have a wide array of vibes, so to speak, and they can all invoke different responses from different people. All of that being said, there's a vast array of different types and subgenres, and of course, all of this is subjective. I think horror is super saturated with tons of garbage tier stuff. I've seen tons of bad horror games and tons of bad horror movies, and that tends to give it a bad reputation. However, today's video isn't about those. Today I want to focus on why I think horror is underrated, and just why I appreciate it so much. Now that's a pretty broad statement, so let me start by explaining the strengths of the genre, and then use specific examples to kind of drive the point home. There aren't many types of media that can share a core premise, but incite such a wide range of emotions from people. Horror is meant to scare people, and many games and movies do this by creating a well-crafted setting or atmosphere, or with really well-done sound design. There's even those artsy games and movies that have a more implied, psychological horror aspect to them. One of the easiest examples of a horror franchise that has wildly different feelings between the games is Resident Evil. Sure, they're all survival horror, but some lean more towards an almost action movie plot with cheesy B-movie dialogue. Where's everyone going? Bingo? And some John Carpenter's The Thing looking ass monster design sprinkled in. Some are claustrophobic Texas Chainsaw Massacre-esque, and some almost feel like a mystery that you're trying to solve. They all have a unique aesthetic, and at least for me, they all make me feel different things. Going chronologically with these examples, Resident Evil 2 sees Leon or Claire arrive at the police station over on with zombies, and as you advance through the game, you unravel the mystery of how everything got so fucked. After the beginning part of the game, Umbrella will Fortnite drop Mr. X in, and he will follow you into the next segment of the game. This adds an unbelievable Jesus amount of tension. Christ. The many zombies and other bioweapons throughout the station were anxiety-inducing enough, and now hearing the big imposing footsteps of Mr. X just behind you is just the icing on the cake. And in terms of sound design, it's absolutely genius. The game nails the feeling of being boxed in, surrounded by things that could kill you. The police station, the sewers, and finally Nest all feel like areas that people could actually exist in, which just adds a nice amount of realism to the setting. Speaking of setting and immersion though, I think one of the subsequent games does those elements just a little bit better. Okay, I'm gonna level with you guys. I might be a bit biased because this is probably my favorite entry in the series, but I think Resident Evil 7 absolutely nails the eerie setting. The Baker House and its claustrophobic maze-like design keep the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay tense. At any point, the mold of the jack could be right around the corner. The set pieces and design of the house are fantastic as well. It all feels, for lack of a better word, icky and fleshy, with undertones of sadness. You can see in some of the lore bits and environmental storytelling that the Bakers were once a relatively happy family before Evelyn came along. It's nuances like that that I really appreciate. The key to some of this, in my opinion, is the first-person camera perspective. While not a new thing in the horror genre, I think it definitely adds to the scare factor in immersion. It really allows you to see the scares from the character's point of view. Being able to put yourself in the shoes of the protagonist is a strength of video games as a medium, and in the case of horror games, it can be extremely unnerving. That's what makes found footage style horror movies so unique and refreshing. Movies like The Blair Witch Project and Cloverfield use this same concept extremely well, but video games take that a step further since you're the one controlling the actions of the protagonist. Indie games have taken this as an easy market, to varying degrees of success, but despite that, I think it can be one of the best and most effective ways to make a horror game. Another game that I think does atmosphere well, while not being full-on horror, is Soma. 
Made by the same people who did Amnesia, arguably the game that popularized the walking simulator style of horror, this one presents more existential horror feel, rather than being as traditionally spooky as its predecessors. It really nails the feeling of being alone in a dying world, and brings up questions about what it really means to be human. If you haven't played this one, I'm about to spoil most of the big plot beats, so skip here if you don't want spoilers. You play as Simon, a man whose only defining characteristic is a terminal brain injury. Good luck. Hope they find a way to reverse the whole, you know, dying thing. <laughs> dying thing? You're the worst support ever. <laughs> you go Ready? in for a brain scan and wake up a hundred years later under the sea in a ruined lab complex with oddly human-like robots oh. and some flesh things roaming about. You find out that humanity outside the lab was wiped out due to some cataclysm, and the remainder basically digitized their consciences to load them onto something called the Ark to be sent into space. Funny. You're there because your brain was used as a template for brain scans going forward, and the AI controlling lab deemed it absolutely necessary to keep humanity going in some form or another. So the AI begins loading people's brains into robots, or in your case, a dead body in a diving suit patched together with some structure gel because the definition of what is human is very broad to a computer. Later in the game, you have to venture deeper into the underwater trench that you're in, so you need a new body that can withstand the pressure. You find a suitable vessel and sit down to load your body into it. However, the process is more of a copy and paste rather than a cut and paste. So while your consciousness that you've been playing as the whole game got put into a new body, your old body is still very much you. So you can put it down permanently while it sleeps or let it wake up much like you did in the beginning of the game. It's ethical questions like that that I think elevates this game beyond a simple horror sci-fi romp. In the final stretch of the game, you do this process to load yourself onto the Ark before it launches into space and the power to the lab dies. You do it just in the nick of time, however, you're still there, but you're also still on the Ark. That version of you lost the coin flip and you're doomed to be trapped in a dying world basically alone forever, while the new you goes on to live in space heaven. I think the concepts of this game are super cool and unique, while being unsettling in a completely different way than the conventional jump scare. Amidst the sea of terrible horror media that comes out throughout the year, you can find some genuinely good stories to be told, and scares to be had. No matter what flavor of horror content you're looking for, there's almost always something for everybody. And I think it has a very specific way of evoking emotions from people that no other genre can quite capture and the medium of video games is a perfect fit to immerse the player into the world. It's not perfect by any means, and it may not resonate with everyone, but I think there's a lot to appreciate about horror, from the atmosphere and designs to the storytelling and world building. It's all just so neat, and that, my dear viewers, is why I appreciate horror so much. I hope that if you've listened for this long, you got some kind of enjoyment out of it, and maybe furthered your appreciation for the media. I certainly enjoyed writing this and deconstructing bits from video games, as always, I appreciate the support. If you've watched up until now, that means the world to me. And if you want to give it a like and subscribe to show your support, that's even better. And it also makes the almighty YouTube algorithm happy. Comments are always appreciated too. I appreciate feedback on my videos, about the content as a whole, or anything else really. I enjoy hearing your guys' opinions on things and having discussions about it, so feel free to leave one of those if you want. Is there an example of a horror game that does something unique or interesting that I didn't mention? Or just one of your personal favorites? Anyway, as always, thank you for watching, and have a good one. I'll see you next time.